Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm well aware that uh, I'm keeping you from your coffee break, so I'll, uh, I'll, try and, uh, I'll try and accelerate proceedings a little here. Great to be back in Taiwan. Um, I spent a dozen years uh, in, my, in my Chromebook era uh, forming partnerships with Taiwanese companies and uh, very successfully and doing the same thing at Rebus. Um, we're, already, uh, we're already building up our, our batch of partners here and uh, both on the chip side of things and on the system side of things. So uh, it's great to be back here. Uh, if anyone uh, wants to chat about becoming a partner with Rebos, um, um, I'll be around today at our booth and, uh, and in the conference. So Rebos is about a three and a half year old company. Uh, we set up to bring RISC-V to the data center and our approach was always based on um, workload defined hardware and uh, always looking at RISC-V with acceleration for particular workloads as the, uh, as the initial in before moving to more generic data center compute. Um, we, are, we are a worldwide company. We actually have an office here in uh, just next to the Sinchu High Speed Rail Station. Kind of nice. You get off, the, get off the train from Taipei. You can actually, from the platform, see our office. Um, so it uh, always feels welcoming when we come here. I'd like to talk a little about our approach to building AI SOCs. And as I said, workload defined. So the, the thing that we find most important is to start from the software side of things. Uh, we built our software team very early and uh, driving from that side of things. And, and you have to think a little about why this, uh, why this is important. Um, if, you, if you look historically, you see many, many really clever hardware innovations that were sort of spoiled by the fact that they didn't quite work with the software stack. Um, and saw a lot of this back in the, uh, the dot-com era when I was cutting my teeth on some of this uh, chip technology. And uh, so very important uh, to look at where the software side of things is as you design. Um, particularly true when, when things are changing as, uh, as was pointed out earlier, things, things changing every three months. It's, uh, it's, it's an era of lots of exploration. Lots of things are evolving. Uh, new models coming out all the time. And what, what's, what's more interesting is that there's more types of models. Right? So everyone was fixated on transformer-based models and now Mamba came out. And it's not a transformer. And if you've optimized your hardware for transformers, you're going to be very sad. So, um, so it's important to have that flexibility. I think uh, the other side of things is there's lots of new build tools. And uh, some of them have been mentioned today. But, but particularly some of the graph compilers, like, uh, like Triton coming in and uh, building uh, from graphs to your hardware but also having the interactive mode that, that, that PyTorch um, in its eager mode brings. So there's a lot to support there. Um, we're particularly interested in the convergence of data with, with, the, with the LLM stacks, the RAG models. And, and again, this is a good illustration of what uh, a customer would want. If, if, if you look at what they do today, They'll say, well, I, I, can, I can download Llama into my VLLM environment. I can pull some embedding models from Hugging Face. I can maybe pull the uh, vector search accelerator from Meta and bundle them all together, stick them under Llama index, and I have my RAG model ready to go. So if you produce new hardware where it's really hard for them to do that, pulling all these individual components from individual repositories, um, then it's going to be hard to get people to adopt your solution. So, so very much consideration on the software side. Um, 
Sort of going in the other direction, yes, it's all change, but lots of people have invested lots of money in existing models, and you'd better be able to pick them up and run them uh, without, without causing any constraints. And so this has very much led Rebus to adopt the uh, mantra, recompile, not redesign. Sort of exactly what you'd do if you got the next generation NVIDIA. You'd take your previous generation code, you recompile it with the latest tools from NVIDIA, and you're off to the races. Yes, you may have to then do optimization for the particular hardware, but, but our goal is to enable that same smooth flow for anyone adopting Rebus's hardware. The other side of this is the base system software, and this is where we lean very much on the RISC-V community. Uh, it's driving, driving the base software uh, and the base instruction set. So it's been very important to see over the last two, three years all of the data center extensions going in, and in particular, things for reliability. When you build these enormous clusters of GPUs or other AI accelerators, um, any failure is going to cause you all sorts of problems, and silent failures are a disaster. So it's very important that we've seen a lot of these RAS features going into the RISC-V world so that you can contain errors very quickly. It's also good to see everyone pitching in on RISE, uh, getting that base software stack established, getting, uh, getting all the things that are needed, numerics libraries, uh, that sort of thing, built up as well as, uh, as well as the compilers and kernels and things that we all think about. Um, and the nice thing about the RISC-V community is everyone in it is contributing back into the open source pool. Um, um, not just Rivas that I highlight here, but, uh, but that's good across, across all of the RISC-V partners. And it's been noticed. So Omdia in their, in their market analysis for servers um, it expressed the view that it was much faster seeing the progress towards data center software for RISC-V than it had been with the ARM architecture. And so the work we're all doing together is, uh, is definitely noticed by people and, uh, and is really accelerating our RISC-V ecosystem. So I haven't got to the chip yet. I'm going to consider the system next because that's, uh, that's yeah, yeah, Matt Mull is very important. Your matrix multiplier performance, everyone gears in on that. But that's not the only thing. Models are getting huge. Databases for your, for your RAG applications are getting huge. So you have to understand the, the memory capacity. Where's that coming from? Uh, you have to understand what bandwidths are needed for different parts of the algorithm. You almost never, and I think, uh, I think Weihan highlighted this just now, that uh, you're almost never considering a single chip in isolation. You're building them up into nodes, you're building the nodes into racks, you're building the racks into data centers. And so the communication side of things, the communication bandwidth that you get, uh, becomes very important too. I talked before about reliability and why that's important in the architecture. It's important at the system level as well. Um, if you get an error on one node, you really want to take that node out of commission as fast as possible before the error data can spread. Then you can swap in a hot standby and continue your computation. And if you look at some of the numbers that Meta has published recently, um, they see many failures during the process of a, a single training run. And uh, it's important that we deal with those. The other thing is you have to consider that at some point the CFO is going to wake up and start asking about how much all this AI stuff is costing and what return they're getting. Um, so thinking about the power consumption, thinking about the cooling that's needed, uh, also becoming very important. So software side, system side, finally I'll get to the chip. The good news here is it can be RISC-V all the way down. Um, we've, had, we've had speakers talk about this already, but, but 
Looking at what we need in our RISC-V SOC, obviously what we're building as our crown jewel is our high-performance RISC-V CPU core, um, competing with uh, the, the Xeons and the Epics. So it's got to be out of order, it's got to be lots of instructions in flight, it's got to be wide, it's got to be all those wonderful things. Um, that's a very important component, obviously, of our system. But there's more. We found a need for 64-bit controller cores. So these are scattered around the system. They do important scheduling tasks, important system management tasks. And uh, as Dr. Sue announced earlier, we're very pleased to have licensed that core from Andes um, and are very, very satisfied with what we're seeing there. It's important that it be a 64-bit core because it needs to work within the system address space. So um, very, uh, very important there to drive it. Uh, it's very useful to have RISC-V in all of these because it makes it very smooth from a compilation viewpoint, very smooth from a debug smooth viewpoint. Next stage you find you need is little microcontrollers scattered around doing IO tasks, doing power management tasks, and here we can tap into the open ecosystem uh, that RISC-V provides, and uh, we use the IBEX core from, from low risk. I think this is, a, this is a great example of how the RISC-V ecosystem works really well. This uh, core actually started off as an academic core from ETH Zurich, and they donated it to uh, the low risk, who commercialized it, put a verification environment, put documentation, all the things you'd expect around the core. And so that's a very strong open source core that can be picked up and used. And uh, I'm not sure that the, uh, the students working on it back at ETH ever imagined that it would be in the latest process node running at a gigahertz and more. But uh, it's a really nice sh showing of how things can flow very rapidly from academia into commercial world uh, by using RISC-V. And the final thing that we're, we're adopting, and again, RISC-V based, again, from the low risk side of things uh, with the IBEX core, only the, the uh, security hardened version, um, is our root of trust using Open Titan. And so, risk five all the way down. So I hope uh, in, my, in my brief comments here, I've explained how we're pulling on the software and platform needs. We're building with the efficiency that's going to be needed as systems get big. And we're tapping into all of the aspects of the risk five ecosystem, both internally developed, licensed, and open source. And uh, thank you uh, for listening.